So hi there and welcome back to the Genomi Stitch Club. I'm Julia, I'm one of the Genomi educators and every month we try to show you a nice project to do, fun project on your machine and look at a few of the stitches, functions, feet, etc. for your Genomi machines. So this month, and it is September, and I'm saying that because I know this is September, well done to those of you that noticed last month, I, I called it July when it was actually August. That just shows you how the summer's been, doesn't it? Um, and so this month I thought it'd be quite good fun to look at something for Halloween with that coming up. So we're going to go with bunting. Um, you can never have too much bunting as far as I'm concerned. Similar thing to what we did for Easter, so you'll recognise the method that I'm using, but, and I know, I know this looks back to front, it's not, it's the camera, um, but I think you'll notice, look, they're fluffy. So I wanted to show you a stitch that I use when I want a technique that's going to give me a little bit of um, texture onto things, and I quite like this. I, I've used it before, I don't know if you can see this little, little, a bug here um, that's got this so it's quite a useful technique especially if you're doing pictorial stuff which we've we've looked at lots of different ways of doing that haven't we but also because we've already done the bunting I thought it might be fun to throw in witchy poo as well um, so I'm going to show you how to make her with her 3d face as well which is stuffed and a hat um, the broom, I, I think you can work out how to make that. Um, I'm not going to make it because having made this, my sewing room ended up with loads of bugs running around the table. So um, anyway, I have debugged it, so I, I'm not going to show you how to make that. You're going to have to go out in the garden, I suggest, to do that. I think this was the grandchildren were making these. Um, but I thought she would be good fun to make and you can put her either end of the bunting if you wanted to or she can just hang around in your window or whatever so quite a lot to get through this month um, so I suggest we're gonna turn around to the sewing machine I'm live in the chat for um, tonight as well so if you've got any questions or anything like that put them in the chat and I'll, I'll try and answer them and get back to you if you're watching on catch up then same thing applies any questions that you've got please do put them in the comments because I do always check the comments afterwards and I check them regularly so I will get back to you as soon as I can and it was absolutely lovely to see some of you um, at Festival of Quilts uh, so that I can put a few faces to names as well so why don't we crack on because uh, we've got quite a lot to get through so I'm going to turn you around and then we'll go to the machine and take a little look at this this stitch and this technique. So first things first, the uh, pattern you can download the templates from the Genomi UK website and there's two pages. Uh, what you are going to need to do is to cut most of these shapes out because you're using them as actual pattern templates. The only bits you don't need to cut out are the lettering um, because you're going to trace those onto your bonder web for that part of the process. And I have already, it says on here, but I have already done the mirror image. I mean, it doesn't matter on the O's, but on the B so that you can do them directly onto the papery side of your bonder web or heat and bond. Um, so you don't need it. They won't be back to front or anything. OK, um, like I say, we've we've looked at doing that previously. So I'm going to sort of be quite brief in that part of this process. So looking at the stitches and again, I'm on the atelier this month, um, but I'm going to show you in my nice big book here the stitch I'm looking to use to do this finish because normally when I do this kind of a technique for lettering I'd be using a zigzag stitch and we are looking for a zigzag stitch but we want quite a specific one and I'm actually looking at this one here which is one of the over edge stitches I think we had a look at it possibly when we were doing the um, stretch stitches as well 
but this is this is an over edge stitch so i'm going to show you its proper job and then show you how i kind of play with it to use it for other things um this stitch will be on pretty much every machine it is one of the utility stitches on most machines and it's just one of those stitches that just about every machine will have so regardless of what machine you're on you should be able to do this technique okay so that's the first thing to find on your machine and then we're going to have a little look i'm going to come bring you in a little bit closer just so that we can actually see now what you would normally be looking at for this stitch is to be using and it will probably recommend it on if you're on a computerized machine and it recommends the feet it will be telling you to use this the m foot and it will either look like this or it may have a little sort of brush on it the ones for the seven millimeters tend to have a little brush here okay but it has got a little do for here and what that is for this lip what that is for is so that it will actually go along the edge of your seam okay so if we pop that on and then what i'll do is just show you what it's going to do i have got bright green in there um, because we're looking at halloween obviously I'm going to pop onto the top some of this lovely Madeira. It's like a neon uh, variegated green, which uh, I thought would be absolutely perfect for what I'm trying to do. And it was a super good match as well for the bright green felt. So I'm going to pop it onto that stitch and the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to line up the edge of my fabric. So imagine this was my seam. So the first thing you've got to do when you're using this stitch is make sure that your, your seam edge is nice and straight. Okay, and then we can start stitching. Now I am just going with the actual serving suggestion that comes up on your machine because that will have been calibrated to fit with the foot, etc, etc. Now what is doing is if I slow this down, you'll see it's another one of those stitches that's walking forwards and backwards and forwards and then backwards and then over, which means that this stitch here, the bottom of the stitch, is actually your triple stitch. Now we love a triple stitch because what it means is it's anchoring this seam here. When you're stitching, if you want a strengthened, a really strong seam, the triple stitch is what you would use for that. Um, also, if you've got a slight stretch, you maybe want a slight stretch in a fabric, the triple stitch is good for that as well. So we've looked at the triple stitch before. Um, it's constantly coming up as really useful. But that's what that foot is actually doing is it's making sure that that zigzag doesn't tunnel it's not rolling over it's holding it open okay which is the same job if you were doing this on it's very similar to an overlock stitch on an overlocker you've got what's called a stitch finger which does the same job holds that zigzag open for you okay so lovely stitch nice foot yeah but we want to do something a little bit more exciting today so i'm putting on my open toe foot here the custom craft so that you can see what i'm doing so because we've got a triple stitch along here what that means is that it's kind of knotting off each of these individual stitches and that's why this technique works specifically with this stitch if you tried it with a regular zigzag stitch it wouldn't work but what I want to do is I want to get these zigzag stitches closer together. So I'm going to take my stitch length down and close it up. Now, this is one of those stitches that, generally speaking, you cannot take your stitch length up on it on a lot of machines. But most machines, you will be able to take it down because what I'm doing is I want to close it up almost 
as I would with my regular zigzag for this kind of job I want to take it almost down to a sort of satin stitch so I've gone down to 1.5 and I'm going to give that a go and see how that looks I've left the stitch stitch width as it is um, what you will find is because this is a specific job stitch for a specific job so to speak very often it won't let you change the width setting because it's going with a specific foot now if you have got this stitch elsewhere on your machine so for example I have got it's if I come up here it's here in my utility stitches okay and it's also here in my decorative stitches now on the utility stitches it's going to limit because it's telling me to use that special foot so it will limit my stitch width if however I go into the decorative stitch setting I will then be able to play with my stitch width so I'm going to do that I'm going to go into that decorative stitch setting and I'm going to go on to that stitch I'm going to take the width right down um, so it's really close but I'm going to take my actual stitch length I've taken sorry stitch length I've taken down and the stitch width I'm taking up okay and because this is a nine millimeter machine I could take that up as far as I want so because I've now gone on to that setting and on this it will not recommend that M foot it will it's telling me the F foot which is the satin stitch foot this is the F2 foot so same thing it, this will, it will work with this one but you can see I've now got a wider stitch going on so the key to this though and where it gets interesting is when I come off of here if I then go in to the back of my work and cut the bobbin thread could have used a slightly smaller pair of scissors there really couldn't I so I cut that bobbin thread and what happens on the front is this I've now got a fringe okay so I think you can see what's going on there so I've now got this effect and I think by looking at that you can see what I mean about using it in decorative work so for things like you know grasses um, if you want to do a foreground and you want a grassy effect or if you're doing flowers and you want um, something a little bit more going around the the edge of your flowers or something like that and then and I am basically a frustrated hairdresser at heart. If we smooth it out, we can also trim it. So look, I've just given it a haircut. But how easy is that to give a, a really cute effect there? And as I say, for using that stitch on something like this, you can see where it's, this is the triple stitch going around here, but it's just giving this nice effect here. Um, which I think is quite good fun. So if we go to our first letter, okay, um, come back out a little bit so you can see. So I've got two layers of felt here and I've bond webbed, making sure I've used greaseproof paper on the top so that it doesn't melt my felt onto the felt, okay, and I'm gonna do this stitch all the way round and then I can trim it up. Okay, so I'm on stitch length. Like I say, I'm on uh, one for this, so it's nice and close. And I'm on the width of seven for this, which I think is plenty. And what I want to do is make sure that my needle is slightly in here so that that triple stitch is coming just a couple of millimeters in okay so and then I can just start stitching round so a bit like with your zigzag it will take take a while because it's a very full-on stitch um, I, I will zip through this so that you don't have to watch the whole so just come down right down to the end and crossed over where I started and I'm just gonna do that a little finishing stitch there, so lock off stitch there. 
now that speeded it up didn't it so i've got this all the way around here so what then happens is this time normally i would say to you if you've got your zigzag or your satin stitch i'd be saying right i want you to cut outside so you don't cut the stitching on this occasion however we actually do want to cut that stitching into that stitching because that's as you can see look as we go around i love doing this it's very satisfying as we go around it's loosening off that bobbin thread all the way around so just reaching for my toothbrush because of course everybody has an old toothbrush in the sewing kit there we go so he's got a nice fluffy edge to him and I'll do the same around the center but obviously I'm going to be here going into the middle and then going round. and if my stitching crosses over in the middle it doesn't matter as long as I've got it here on the outside edge with that triple stitch it's all going to hold in place so the B is quite an easy letter to go around the O's are quite easy so basically that is your uh, bunting sorted okay so I think the next thing to move on to and now we're back to just ordinary stitching going on here is things like the face and the hands because to actually make the witch we need to have things like the legs and her arms done before we do the main body of the witch and I also want to show you how to go about making the face as well so first off let's just quickly run around the gloves now for this this is tiny isn't it okay and we're going to need two of these and i'm just going to hold that in place on there i mean if you've got a little um tiny pin you may have one of those little applique pins or even a little dab of glue or something like that you know just to hold it in place but i can normally just hold it with my finger or you can draw around it uh, with a, a pen that's going to iron off or something like that again remember to use your grease proof we don't want this melted stuff all over your iron but because this is tiny i am going to use my straight stitch my bog standard straight stitch but i have taken my length again right down to one so that it's a tiny weenie stitch so that as i go around the curves and you'll see because i'm on i'm on a decent speed here and i'm just using the template the paper template as my guide i mean it you know, doesn't matter if it's so lots of lift and turn but that tiny weenie stitch will make this much easier as we go round and into the I, I did contemplate doing <laughs> dozens doing all the fingers and then after I did this just with a thumb I thought that is not happening <laughs> so if at this point the thumb starts getting a little bit misshapen do you know what it doesn't matter does it because let's just think of this as a pair of gloves that I may knit because I can assure you that knitting is not my forte and um, what you could do which I hadn't really thought about but you know if you wanted to make these kind of with with children which you can you can do certain bits and get them to do certain bits but if you were to get like a green pipe cleaner you might be able to fashion some slightly more witchy hands so basically that's what we've got and then we do the other one and then we're going to cut close to that edge just so we've got two little uh, hands or whatever because we need something to hold the broom so that's that similar thing for the face now this looks a bit weird i know but it's because the face is done in two parts so that you get this sort of 3d effect with the nose okay so again i'm going to use that tiny straight stitch to just go around the outline of the face 
and this is bigger so I can actually pin this and do all the sort of green stuff while I've got the, the green thread on Again, so on that tiny straight stitch so that you can do all that shaping and then we can take that off and there we go we've got our side on face so again I'm going to trim super close without cutting through my stitching and then at points here like under the nose just snip in and under the chin as close as you can just going to trim a little bit closer there the closer you get in the easier this is going to be to turn okay so what actually happens then is that when we turn it through if you get something like a knitting needle and just gently go in and get the shape of that nose and then as we run it round she's got a nice sort of pointy chin as well okay so that was easy wasn't it and this this is then the actual face so what I want to do though is I'm just gonna fold that over to the side there because this is actually the shape of the face I'm going to fold that template in half because I need to make sure that that seam because we have got a seam actually runs down the middle um I think it's this one where look she's slightly off at the bottom there it doesn't actually make that much difference but anyway I'm going to put another piece of felt over the top there sort of folding that in half I kind of know where the top and the bottom are look there so I can then open that out and then I'm going to pop a, a pin through that center just to kind of see where I am so that I can you can kind of double check underneath to make sure that you're more or less in the right place and we're going to use that same tiny stitch and run all the way around the head shape so like I say I've used this technique um, and a similar thing without I've done different slightly different noses and techniques for noses as you do um, for gnomes and Father Christmases um, and what else did we do? I think we did angels and choir boys. I've done, like I say, you know, lots of different kinds of bunting and uh, that kind of thing. So badges as well. They make quite cute badges. In fact, I did start doing that. Um, of just doing the faces if you wanted to to make some sort of little Halloween badges or brooches. So I've gone all the way around there. There we go. So that's now our head shape, and I can feel the nose is in here. So again, I'm going to trim that up nice and close so that we're going to get those curves. Okay, and then I want to pull it apart because I want to make a snip in the back of the head, but I don't want to cut the front. So I make a little tiny snip first and then I can make a, a bigger one because I'm going to turn it through, but that back of the head doesn't get, doesn't get seen because it's stitched on there and then that means I can turn 
the whole thing through ready for stuffing. So get that all turned out ready to go and then what we can do is actually stuff it so that it's nice and squidgy okay and then we can put some features on it okay so I have stuffed the face and I've got this gap at the back so I've threaded up on here I've got like a top stitch weight thread uh, you could use embroidery thread I'm using it for the back because this isn't going to be seen and it's easier to actually have this thread on the back so I am I don't really care how this looks at the back because like I say it's not going to get seen so I'm just going to quickly stitch that closed which is going to bring me up to the top of the the face here okay and then what I want to do is come down so that my thread is coming out here just above the nose ready for the first eye now eye wise these are four millimeter little black beads I often use these or eyes on this sort of thing just make sure that your needle it's one of those ones where you need the needle to be thick enough so you can thread it with a thick thread but also get your needle through the eye so she's got nice beady eyes and then I'm just going back in just to the side a millimeter or so to the side and then as I pull that eye through I want to pull it in good and tight because can you see what happens it then starts to give that face a bit more character and then I'm taking it over to the other side now this one I'm going to just do one stitch to anchor it before I then put on my next eye but it's almost creating like an eye socket you could put it if you were going to do this for Lilies, you could do a French knot and obviously you'd do a much better job of the stitching up at the back as well. It is toy safe stuffing but <laughs> you probably wouldn't want anything this scary for that age group anyway. Okay so I've pulled those in tight so that I've got some sockets there. I didn't put this on the other one but if you want to make her quite scary what you can also do Oops, come on threaded there. So let's just thread that back up. It's just one stitch for an eyebrow. Oh, she looks furious, doesn't she? I mean, I think if my foundation had gone that wrong, I'd probably be looking. Oh, yes very scary and then I'm going to come down here to do the same thing a couple of little stitches and again I'm pulling it tight because I want to sort of pull it into the wadding so I've done two stitches on that mouth but look as soon as I pull it in um, what were those dolls that <laughs> used to have back in the 70s was it the cabbage patch dolls they were always quite terrifying actually weren't they um <laughs> she has that well she's the right color i suppose isn't she um and then just anchor it off on the underneath so like i say that is quite an easy way of getting a little bit of uh, shape and character as well because you'll find that you know oh hang on where do we go they all do look slightly different, don't they? Which is quite nice, actually. So there we go. So that's the face done. And she's going to need some hair as well. The legs, what I've done is I have stitched with triple stitch down the two pieces, two of the pieces of felt. They're about an inch wide. And I've stitched in a little bit 
because if you cut it too narrow it's just quite difficult to do this so I find it easier to stitch those two lines they're about half an inch apart and then I can just get in with my scissors and give that a nice clean edge to it I really wanted to do a stripy legs actually but I couldn't work out quite how to do it I was going to try it with a like a a sharpie or something like that but I think on felt it might might run in too much now the boots what I've done is I've used the shape and I've done exactly what I did with the mittens where I've just kind of used that tiny straight stitch I've done it in the green so that you can see um just to go round the shape just so it's doubled up haven't gone across the top so that what I can do is then just pop my leg in there and then I can just stitch across the top there oh I think I've got different colour thread in now haven't I oh well I've changed it out for black for the next part of the operation it really matters does it there we go so they're stitched on um So that's that's the legs done for the hands and the arms I've cut these two pieces from my main fabric and I'm just going to go down here and along here but what I want to do is put in at the bottom one of my hands and just make sure the thumb is here so I'm just going to push that in so that when I stitch this I don't actually stitch into my thumb I could pop a little pin in just to hold that in place hang on let's get that right there we go so I can just go across there and along there and then turn it through I'm going to do the same with the other side for doing that take that foot off I would uh, just put on my regular satin stitch on my A foot for that just because it holds it more more in place when you're working with this small stuff so let's do that don't necessarily need that tiny little stitch here I'm going to stitch back so I'm just on my ordinary straight stitch here because there's no sort of shaping or anything like that and then take that out I can feel that the thumb is here so it's not going to get stitched in okay and I'm just going to snip off that corner and that corner and then just tuck that through once you get a bit fiddly but once you get down to the that point look you can see the glove and then we can pull it and there we go now I haven't stuffed these arms or anything I've just left them as they are but you can if you want put a bit of wadding in and stuff your witch but I don't know that it necessarily needs it so that's one arm done going to do the other arm and then once we've done all of those we're ready to have a look at the body and how that all gets put together but before that and because we're on the black thread every witch needs a hat so these are the two hat pieces okay and what we are going to do here and I know black is a next to impossible color to look at you can pin this but this is one of those jobs and I often say this with curves where actually the fewer pins the better so 
generally speaking with curves I would only be pinning it in a couple of places and normally it would be here at the very beginning the centre point so I'm just folding this is the whole of the hat so I'm folding the whole of that hat in half and I'm going to pop another one there and then stretch that curve along to that end okay and then as you go under the machine once you're kind of under the machine and started I'm going to anchor it in I'm going to pull that pin out of the way get my needle down so I'm anchored and then I'm going to back stitch and then come forward and then as I trouble with felt is it's got absolutely zero stretch to it really because normally what you'd be doing is stretching the underneath of that curve to fit the top it's a little bit harder to do if you're struggling to get in here then use something like um you know flat nose screwdriver or something like that and just do it a little bit at a time so that you don't i mean if you do get a few kinks and creases in it it's not going to be a, a biggie is it it's a, a witch's hat let's not get too uptight about this maybe we'll look at doing decent curves another day so taking those pins out i think this is going to end up with a couple of Kinks, but never mind. There we go. It's supposed to look battered anyway, isn't it? Okay. So that's the bottom of the hat done. So all I need to do now is do all along that side seam there because I've done the hat kind of all in one. So again, I'm starting slightly down and then I'm going to back stitch practically to the edge and then come forward again. This is one of those things where that little end there, if you don't do that, if you try and start on that end, chances are it's just going to shove it down into your feed dogs. It won't like it. And then I'm just holding it together. And as I come to this bit, because it's going to be relatively thick, I'm just going to divide and conquer so one seam is facing one way and one is the other way and again I'm just going to use my can you see look if I lift that foot I can just push that seam underneath just so it goes across there and again I've got my pivot on that's why it keeps coming up back stitch at the end okay so I can turn that hat through this is very satisfying as well making this hat actually a bit twiddly getting it i couldn't get the full pointy point because the the felt is quite thick in there so i'm just being a bit careful how I turn it through with that needle because otherwise probably need a slightly bigger knitting needle for this so anyway wriggle that around so that you can get a little bit more of a, a point to your hat but there we go and what I did do actually I think on this one I've just when I've stitched it on and I've just used a few big stitches to stitch it on to the face and once I've put the hair on as well I just did this by hand I've just caught it in a couple of places here just to make it look you know a bit sort of bendy okay so that's the face the hat the hands so we just now need her dress and then we're done so the 
sort of final bit of the actual body of the witch is this and I you need to cut out your template so that you can draw around it what I've got here is I've got a layer of felt just to make her a little bit stiffer or you can use wadding or something like that and then I've got two pieces of my main fabric which are right side together just gonna cut down that side I often use this method when I'm doing quite an intricate shape especially for things like bunting where instead of actually cutting out that shape if you draw around it and here's one I've already done that is your stitching line okay and you're going to follow that stitching line all the way around it's much much easier but what I've also got marked on here is these which are the position for the arms and then down here the legs okay because what we need to make sure is that they are between the two layers so that they get stitched into the layers as we go round okay so I'm just kind of lining them up here so that it's at the correct angle if they're slightly on the wonk when it's done it doesn't matter it's a witch legs are easy because they're going to go in pretty darn straight and you're going to have to bend them down like so so that the boots fit because otherwise you're going to end up probably stitching your boots in i'm just going to take these pins out so that i can get in under here it's a bit fiddly but it's far less fiddly than all the other stuff you'd have to do if we didn't do this so once they're inside like that then just double check there we go so i need to move that leg over so that it's sitting in those lines there and those you can kind of feel as well and make sure that they're outside of that stitching line so that as you are stitching round they are uh, they're here look so they're actually finishing here which means that as I stitch around if I put that pin in there as I stitch across here that's making sure those legs are actually going to be in there okay and we're going to stitch all the way around because the turning gap is going to be cut into one layer because that gap will then get covered by the actual witch's face okay so I'm going to go back to the machine don't need necessarily a tiny tiny stitch here I'm going to start on a straight edge um, so I'm going to take it to about 1.5 um, just because I've got a little bit of inning and outing to do and I can just follow that stitching line I've got my open toe foot back on again so as I can follow that line exactly and as I say I use this method an awful lot when I'm doing um, shaped particularly bunting as I said I love a bit of bunting and quite frankly um, one day I am going to write a book on bunting and it's going to be called 300, 365 days of bunting and I think I might do bunting for every day of the year um, obviously I will be working on that for some time so don't rush off to you know the booksellers anytime soon <laughs> so I can feel as I come across here and you can hear the machine as well because it's much much thicker because I've got all those layers of felt under there and into the point just one stitch sometimes when you're doing a point like that just take one stitch straight across before you then go back down to your point because otherwise it's quite a lot because we've got the felt as well you won't get sharp sharp points probably on there anyway like I say I can feel the other arm up here just going to take that pin out so it's not in my way as I come up 
and I haven't put a walking foot or anything on. Shouldn't really need it, but just keep everything nice and smooth and flat as you go. It's not that thick, so I shouldn't want it. So there we go, that's the top of her sort of cape. So that's all done. So what I then do is grab my scissors and then same old, same old. I am going to come out so you can see what I'm doing. Going to trim, and again I'm trimming relatively close and snip across the corners and snip into things like that as well just to help with the turning process okay now I'm going to go back and snip into there across the corner I made this a lot more complicated to start with, with uh, lots and lots of these. You can do it, just do it straight across at the bottom if you want to. <laughs> if you want to make life a little bit easier for yourself. In fact, if you wanted to make life even easier for yourself, you could just do, as I said before, the witch's face. Um, maybe do it on a sort of rosette or something like that out of this sort of fabric. Um, so I can pull that apart and I can feel, yeah, I can feel that I've only got one layer going on there. So I snip in, get my scissors in, look, only one layer, and then that is going to be my turning hole. Okay, and then it all has to come through. We're back to the birthing, aren't we? There's, there was birthing last week, which wasn't, you know, we weren't birthing anything quite as, as <laughs> scary. I don't think she's that scary, though, is she, really? I'm not really that bothered about Halloween, but I must say I, I can understand. Because when we were kids, we didn't really do Halloween in quite the same way. I think we did apple bobbing and that was about it. Gosh, I sound so old. Um, but I must say, I can completely understand why the kids want to be dressing up. There we go. And it all, oh, oh, there we go. So, first out, the legs and the arms. It's all starting to happen. There we go. So, again, in with something a little bit sharp and pointy just to gently push out that shape. As you go around. Um, I think I'm on a four millimeter needle here and uh, for those knitters amongst you I would probably recommend a six or eight millimeter for this process because you're far less likely to go through your fabric and this is quite pointy because it's a bamboo one as well. There we go. So once that is all done she's just ready for her finishing touches there we go oh, i thought i put a leg on the wrong way around for one awful minute there so this is the gap at the top but as i say once we've got her hair and i've just done wool for her hair there any color you like um there's her arms and we've done the hat she does need i mean she doesn't have to have hair but i think she does look a little bit better i might see if i can find some purple 
wool for this one so that it matches her boots um, and then you can make yourself or get the kids to make you a broomstick and I think that's it and we are just about done so let's bring you back to the front for a second so there we go just we've got her Ooh. and this one I will finish up and put a picture in it did occur to me as well if you wanted to make um, a Halloween version of the Easter bag you could do the lettering on the actual bag there I might well be doing that so they've got trick-or-treat bags uh, because these were very successful so uh, as I said or you can do just the um, witch's face on there instead of a carrot um, and then do the boo on the bag as well out of your your Halloween fabric so hopefully that all made sense and I would love to see anything that you're making if you've got any more questions pop them in the comments I will get to, to answering all of those um, if you enjoyed the video and if you enjoy what we're doing then do give us a, a thumbs up and uh, spread the word amongst all your uh, sewing friends and we'll see you next month at the end of uh, where are we? Oh, the end of October. So just before Halloween. But I've given you a, a lead time because I didn't want to do it like a couple of days before Halloween because I thought that that wasn't fair. This kind of stuff takes time. I know that. So we may well start looking at Christmas next month and uh, I'll see you then.